Hi. Well, it's sort of like spring here in Wisconsin. Normally in March, we have snow that's about three feet deep and it's below zero. But this year is unlike any I've experienced before. It's been 60s and even 70 degrees in the last couple of weeks. And today, all the snow is gone and it's in the 50s. It's almost well, it is. It's t-shirt weather here in Wisconsin. So, so very seldom do we get Fabergé silver in. But uh, last week, we got in a big group, about 300 pieces and a piece of hollowware. So, talking about Fabergé, it's one of the top names in the world. And the company started in Russia in 1842 they became the goldsmith to the czars and the imperial court. And they made their Fabergé eggs. They did the finest silver and gold probably ever made in the world. And then 1917 came, tragedy. The czar was overthrown and communism took over. The Fabergé family was forced to flee to Switzerland and the company was closed down by the communists. So it was just a, a thing of the past. And then early uh, 1990s, you know, there was an opening in Russia. There was, you know, private firms allowed again, and there was thoughts of reviving Fabergé. And then a miracle occurred, 1997, forgotten warehouse in Estonia. What do they find? The dyes for five of the Fabergé patterns thought to be gone, lost, uh, you know, the victims of the revolution, World War II, you know, couldn't possibly still be around, but there they are. And so gave them the idea to start making silver again. And they started actually making silver again in the year 2000, and the company, Fabergé, started making their jewelry, eggs, gold, jewelry again in 2007. And, you know, so the silver that we're going to show you was actually made for, you know, the czars, royalty, you know, it's, it's, the greatest, and it's a miracle that it's here. So the first, and please forgive my butchering of Russian words, but the first one is Gazinka Palace. And it's a really cool pattern. It's got like a group of, oh, like a duck hanging and vegetables, and every piece is different in the middle. And so here's a punch ladle, a sardine fork, a big cheese knife, a master butter. The one in the middle here is called Grand Europa. And again, really cool looking pattern. Here's a soup ladle. They really like their sardines apparently because here's another sardine fork. They must have had a taste for lobster in Russia because here is a lobster pick. And the, the last one is Rushi, let's see, let's see, it is Opera Rusi, it's probably Opera of Russia. And there's a um, ice tongs, there's a big serving fork, again, a cheese knife. You know, it's just a miracle that these survived. The other piece that we got in this group is this great sturgeon. So the sturgeon, it's got a spot in the middle, uh, naturally for caviar, and it's gold wash. So you put your ice in here, a little glass container, and then you would eat your caviar out of this really realistic sturgeon caviar holder. So thank you.